This is Concept 2 Notes, and we're going to be talking about conservation of energy. Now, I know this says honors. If you are in a non-honors class, keep watching. There are going to be two slides that do not apply to you, or we're going to do a math problem that I will not expect you to do in your class at all, but then you'll need to stick around for the very end of the note. So just know that's the only difference between what you need to know and what the honors or more advanced students need to know. They have a little bit more math, okay? But I'll make it very clear when we get there. So we cannot talk about energy unless we talk about the law of conservation of energy. This is also known as the uh, first law of thermodynamics. But it says that energy can never be created or destroyed. It can only change forms. And because of this, it's important to remember that some of the different forms that energy can take on, okay? So Energy can never be created or destroyed. It can only change forms. This is the first law of thermodynamics, the law of conservation of energy. So we are going to refresh our memories on some of the different forms of energy that we learned about in concept one. And then we'll talk about how um, this changing of forms kind of works and kind of start spotting it ourselves in different places in the world around us. Okay, so forms of energy. There are so many pictured here. In class, I'd want you to look at these different pictures and then shout out, you know, kind of what you see here. You know, maybe you see um, electrical energy at work. Maybe you see these apples and you think about how they are above the earth's surface. You're thinking gravitational potential energy. Maybe you're seeing this light bulb or the sun and you're thinking about radiant or light energy. Okay, you're thinking about the satellite that is, you know, sending your your text messages to different people in this class. And you're thinking about electromagnetic energy. Maybe you see this and you're thinking of a nuclear power plant and thinking nuclear energy or elastic energy with this bow and arrow. There's so many different forms of that energy can take. But that energy is not just stagnant in one form. It's always being transformed. It's always being converted into different forms. So we can talk about energy transformations, energy conversions, they're all kind of talking about the same things. But we're looking at this idea that energy is not being destroyed. It's not disappearing. And it's not just being created on earth out of nowhere, but it's actually changing form. So for instance, looking at a firework, thinking about, okay, what would the source of energy be for a firework? Well, typically that energy is stored inside of the firework and it's going to be in the form of chemicals that will need to go through a chemical reaction to create the explosion, the combustion. So it's going to start as chemical, but then as we see the firework, we're going to see light, we're going to hear sound, and we're going to feel heat often too. So it's going to go from chemical and then be transformed into all these other forms. Okay, think about a solar panel. At its most basic description, it's taking in solar energy from the sun or that light energy from the sun, and then it's going to convert it to electrical energy that can power our devices and turn our lights on. I think about, I have, we have outdoor security cameras at our house and they are solar powered. They do not plug into anything, but instead they have these little panels on the top. They take that in and that's what keeps them running and going. Okay, thinking about a light bulb, it's kind of going the opposite direction. It's taking electrical energy from this wire and converting it into light by which that we can see. Okay, let's look at a couple more. Okay, think about a phone and how it's charging. It's taking that electrical energy and then it's converting it into light and sound, but then also electromagnetic energy for all the things that you're seeing and it's taking in there with the Wi-Fi and all of that. Thinking about a plant, any sort of plant is going to be doing photosynthesis. And if you remember this from previous biology or life science courses, plants are going to take in solar energy from the sun, radiant energy, and they're going to store that energy in the bonds of glucose, okay, C6H12O6. So it's going to take solar and convert it to chemical energy. Then consumers like us will eat plants or we'll eat animals that have eaten plants, we'll take that chemical energy and glucose and we're going to break it down and convert it into chemical energy in the form of ATP, which is something our bodies can actually use. Okay, so that's looking at this, an energy transformation at a biochemical level. Okay, now think of it about a musician, a guitarist. They are going to move their fingers and move these different chords on the guitar and through that movement, create music. So it's really a kinetic to energy transformation 
into a sound transformation of energy. That's what we're going to see here. So we're looking at these different transformations. And oftentimes, y'all, when you see these, there are going to be different transformations that you could kind of argue and say, hey, this could be this or it could be this. There may be multiple right answers and that's fine. It's going to be about your ability to defend your claim with evidence and reasoning. Why is this kinetic to sound? Why do you see this and think solar to chemical? That kind of thing. You need to be able to explain it. Now, this is a time where, again, we're trying to build on this. Like I said, energy is a little bit more complicated um, and it covers so much. So we're building on what we've learned so far. And I'm going to introduce you to a new type of energy we haven't necessarily talked about yet. And that is mechanical energy. So mechanical energy, it's looking at the total amount of kinetic and potential energy in a system. Okay, think back to the uh, lab activity with exploring the motion of a pendulum and think back to the inquiry activity with the energy skate park and watching the total energy and how it's not changing. The total energy in that system in that skate park is the mechanical energy. And we're, it, sometimes it's easier just to refer to the mechanical because that kinetic and potential, especially in something like a pendulum or a skateboarder going back and forth on the ramp, it's constantly being converted between kinetic and gravitational potential energy. So it's just easier to look at the overall energy, which would be the mechanical energy in the system. Okay, so in a falling object, GPE is getting converted to KE as the object falls. So as its height goes down, the GPE is going down and the kinetic energy is going up. Okay, so let's look at it for a different example because we already saw the ramp kind of example, um, which is a U shape in the skate park. And we also saw it with the pendulum. So now I kind of want to look at an upside down U, um, this kind of shape and seeing how that works. Okay, so let's consider a um, golf ball in a club. On the ground, the golf ball, and when the golf ball is first being hit, it's at its lowest height but it's going to have its greatest kinetic energy when it's first hit because of its velocity, it's going to be moving. But then as that ball arcs up, as it's increasing in height, its gravitational potential energy is going up and its kinetic energy is going down. It's slowing down until it gets to the point where it hits its max height. For a split second, there will be no kinetic energy and then it tra starts transferring again. It starts picking up speed as it accelerates, as it falls. Its height goes down, so its GPE goes down, and then its kinetic energy is going up. And then it's going to have its highest kinetic energy again as it lands. So overall, though, because of the law of conservation of energy, we know that the overall energy in the system, the mechanical energy, is going to remain constant. But as the ball is moving, or as the pendulum is swinging, or as the skateboarder is going up and down on the ramp, the energy is constantly going back and forth between GPE and KE. And then also parts of the energy are going to appear to be quote unquote lost in the form of thermal energy as friction, which is something we'll talk about later too. But the reason I'm introducing this to you now is for two reasons. One, I want you to understand that the overall energy is referred to as mechanical and that the relationship between GPE and KE is inverse. As one is going up, the other is going down. Now, all of this for honor students can be put together to do some calculations here. So I'm going to do an example quickly for honor students. If you are not an honor student, you can skip ahead to the next slide, which is going to talk about sources of energy. Okay, you need to hear that part. But if you're an honor, stick with me. Let's do an example of what this would look like from a quantitative perspective and how you could be assessed that way. So let's look at Thomas and Matt. Thomas is playing baseball with Matt. Thomas hits the 0.14 kilogram baseball and it moves with a velocity of 27 meters per second. Assuming all energy is conserved, so assuming that none gets quote unquote lost or converted to thermal energy in the form of friction um, or any other source, what would be the height the ball could reach if it's hit straight upward? So if, basically saying if all that kinetic energy gets converted to GPE at the peak of the ball's height, then I could figure out how high that ball could actually get. Okay, so first think about this. What can we find with mass and velocity? Look at your reference sheet. We can find kinetic energy of the ball. Then if it says that all energy is conserved, that means no energy would be quote unquote lost. So that kinetic energy will eventually equal the GPE at the peak of the ball's height. And so that means that then whatever we find for KE, we can use as JPE and then rearrange to solve for height. Okay, so let's do that. Again, here's the question. I just made it a little bit smaller so we have more room to do our work here. Okay, so 
let's radar this. We've already read it, but let's now analyze. What are we looking for? We're looking for the height of the ball. What do we know? We know the mass is 0.14 kilograms. We know the velocity is 27 meters per second. And we know that any object that is going to be in the air is going to have an acceleration due to gravity as it falls of 9.8 meters per second squared. We also know that we can find with M and V, we can find KE with one half MV squared. So let's do that first. So we're going to plug in 0.14 for mass, 27 for velocity. Half of 0.14 is 0.07, 27 squared is 729. We multiply those and we get 51.03 joules for kinetic energy. Therefore, if because we're saying all energy is conserved, all of that kinetic energy would get converted to GPE at the peak of the ball's height. So we can say that at the peak of the ball's height, GPE will also equal 51.03 joules. So it'll be no KE at that point and it'll all be GPE since all energy is conserved. So now we can use GPE equals ham and rearrange it to find height, okay? So remember, when we want to get a variable on its own, we have to do the opposite of what's being done to it. So currently it's being multiplied by acceleration due to gravity and mass. So the opposite of multiplication is division. We're going to divide by acceleration times mass and we're going to do that to both sides so it's fair. That's going to allow those to cancel out and it's going to leave us with height equals GPE divided by acceleration to gravity times mass. Now it's just a simple plug and chug. So height equals GPE, 51.03 joules, divided by acceleration due to gravity times mass. So 9.8 times 0.14. That's 51.03 over 1.372. And we get a height of 37 meters. And that's two significant figures all the way back from the beginning here on what we were working with. Okay. So in class for honors, we'll practice this math. I promise. We're also going to do some, um, stations where we practice some more of those energy conversions or there's energy transformations of like looking at a picture and being able to say like, this is electrical to light or whatever that may be. So we'll practice that. But I have one more thing I want to talk to you about in these notes before I let you go. And this is where I need my non-honor students. I need everyone to come back to me because we need to talk about sources of energy, okay? There are a lot of different resources through which we get energy to power our daily lives. And often those sources of energy, we categorize as being from renewable sources or resources or non-renewable. A renewable resource is a source of energy, an energy source that can naturally replenish itself, okay? So water, sunlight, wind, geothermal, okay? I think about my security cameras with their little solar panels on top. I'm not having to change the batteries on the security camera. I'm not having to make sure there's an outlet nearby. I'm doing nothing to it. It's a, it's a naturally replenishing resource where sunlight is going to hit it at different intervals and keep recharging it for me. It's renewing on its own. Okay. Non-renewable resources are energy sources that are limited in supply and, or are being consumed and used more quickly then they can be replenished, okay? These are things like fossil fuels, the coal, oil, and natural gas that are most likely powering your house. That's what's powering the outlets in your home. It can be nuclear um, energy potentially as well, okay? So these are examples of non-renewable resources. So this is kind of where our starting place, like where's energy coming from? This is where it's coming from. And then we can look at how in this concept it gets transferred or transformed into different sources and forms that we're going to see it used. So we're going to do a project where we kind of investigate this more, but that is uh, kind of the overview of energy transformations and conservation of energy.